Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone and welcome to the 29th lecture of uh, surface engineering. Uh, we've been discussing various uh, uh, surface engineering approaches, uh, so-called conventional surface engineering approaches so far. Uh, we have talked about introduction of carbon through various kinds of carburizing processes, introduction of nitrogen through nitriding processes, sometimes in the solid state, sometimes in the gaseous or sometimes even in aqueous or uh, salt path. Uh, we are now going to actually combine the uh, modern approaches with uh, one of the conventional techniques uh, and uh, discuss something known as uh, plasma nitriding. So, the basic principle is the same that we are trying to introduce uh, nitrogen onto the surface with an aim of uh, producing a nitrided layer, uh, interstitial compound layers uh, between iron and nitrogen. Uh, so, the hardening processes, the improvement in properties and so on are going to be exactly the same. The mechanism remains the same. Uh, time required is less, uh, temperature also could be little lower. The precision, the, effective, the effectiveness or uh, the overall utility of the process is much better. In fact, we will compare with the conventional plasma nitriding with the conventional nitriding processes with uh, plasma nitriding and be able to uh, show you as to why plasma nitriding is always uh, considered more efficient and uh, effective. So, the process of plasma nitriding is sometimes actually uh, also referred as uh, the glow discharge process because you do see a blue violet glow surrounding the sample in the nitriding chamber. Uh, the Essentially, though that glow comes from the presence of uh, the particular ions, particularly the nitrogen ions. So, uh, in order to get the glow discharge, you require low pressure. So, we are talking about anything like a few millibars of uh, pressure. So, you evacuate and then backfill and then ionize. So, so, the gas is ionized and remain in the excited state and um, uh, the temperature would be typically uh, anything like 450 to 520, 530 or somewhere in the range of 450 to 550. So, we create the plasma, we generate the plasma which contains ions, electrons and neutrals. The unit, the plasma nitrating overall unit contains the, uh, the, the vacuum furnace. So, so, this is the vacuum furnace. We need a power supply. Uh, which actually supplies power to the unit for ionization. We need a microprocessor control device which takes care of both the uh, evacuation as well as uh, the application of potential difference, control of current and so on. We require a gas mixing uh, device. Uh, usually the gas that we feed in is not pure nitrogen, is always uh, nitrogen plus uh, hydrogen and uh, at a definite proportion. Uh, we need a pumping device uh, like this one, uh, so that uh, we first evacuate and then open the valve and backfill. And uh, finally, this, this is the workpiece. The, at times, the sample also needs to be rotated or moved and so we need a sample handling stage also at, at, at uh, specific times. The important part is that we have two electrodes here to be able to create the plasma uh, in the form of gl DC glow discharge. So, we have the cathode and we have the anode. So, cathode of course, is connected to the to the uh, work pieces. The definite uh, uh, electro uh, potential difference uh, is required to create the plasma and uh, mm, the gases uh, get excited and ionized and in the process we get a luminous discharge which is also called the glow discharge. Now, uh, from our school days we have heard uh, that the matter whatever we can touch or perceive or see or which actually carries a weight or a volume 
can be uh, can exist in either of the three uh, possible physical states the solid liquid and gaseous obviously uh, temperature has a role to play but uh, the state of the matter could be at equilibrium for various matter for example at room temperature we do have uh, several matter which exist as gas as liquid or also as solid which has a rigid uh, structure. So, essentially by solid what we mean is that something which has a definite volume and does not change its shape unless acted upon by forces. Liquid will have a definite volume, but no specific shape and is fairly can take up any shape, but having a fixed volume and gas will be always um, something which does not have a neither the sh uh, specific shape or the volume and certainly is not rigid. But we also did hear a mention about the so called fourth state and that fourth state is called the plasma state. This fourth state is not an equilibrium state, it is a metastable state and this metastable state actually uh, comprises the quasi neutral combination of the ions, the electrons, the charge species and also the neutral particles, the atoms. So, combination of the ions, cations or anions and electrons and the atoms at a metastable in a metastable equilibrium state is called plasma. Now, uh, we in order to create the plasma, we actually excite through application of an electri uh, electric field and this electric field also um, uh, can interact with the, with the species inside. So, plasma nitriding uh, as we have already seen is a process where we place the sample immersed in the plasma and then we uh, stabilize the plasma by application of uh, certain specific DC power. Uh, the pressure inside the chamber is very low, much lower than the atmospheric pressure. We may need certain pre-cleaning cycle to remove the thin oxide layer or other contaminants from the surface and then we actually uh, allow a uh, flow of gases usually nitrogen and hydrogen at times also with methane and uh, application of uh, electric uh, potential difference between uh, the electrodes at very low pressure causes ionization and then we create the plasma which has a typical blue violet glow. This uh, mixture uh, nitrogen hydrogen actually could be anything from hydrogen amount could be anything from 80 to 95 percent and uh, nitrogen is typically about say 5 to 20 percent. This is pre-mixed and through this gate valve we allow the gas to flow in after we have evacuated and we maintain that we monitor the pressure the temperature is controlled, the vacuum pumps evacuate and then allow. We also have a cooling jacket outside uh, the chamber, so that the chamber is uh, the outside the chamber or the shell is maintained at room temperature. Uh, now, um, the sample is usually placed on this stage and if needed, this stage can be moved or rotated, but usually this is a static state. And uh, uh, then this is the anode and this is the cathode. So, the cations that we create here namely uh, nitrogen plus ions, they will uh, gradually come and then sit on top of this uh, workpiece, get absorbed and then subsequently um, will create uh, a diffusion profile inside the material. Um, so, this is sort of uh, a schematic uh, cartoon to show that you actually have a violet or blue violet sheath around the samples and the sheath essentially is a certain concentration of ions. So, what we do is when we actually feed in the nitrogen hydrogen mixture, they dissociate in inside the chamber and create the ions and radicals uh, along with some uh, density of neutrals and that creates the glow discharge. So, the ions and radicals they come onto the surface and uh, get adsorbed. So, once they get adsorbed then uh, thin surface layer uh, through this chemi adsorbed layer 
will now allow diffusion of uh, the species in this particular case we are talking about nitrogen, but this uh, uh, the nitrogen in an activated state or the nascent state actually when they um, uh, come in contact with the surface uh, the free electron cloud from the surface allows them to convert into nitrogen nascent nitrogen atoms. So, this uh, nitrogen ions coming from the environment from, from the plasma comes in contact with the surface of the work piece, acquires uh, electrons and then reaches a neutral state, but this is uh, in an activated state and now it is ready to diffuse inside. So, nitrogen now comes from all sides uh, and, uh, and then that is how it actually uh, gets adsorbed and then diffuses inside. Uh, generally, external heating is not required, uh, but at times, in order because we maintain this at a particular isothermal condition, but then at times we actually may require uh, external heating uh, attached to the stage here uh, to uh, make sure that we actually uh, are able to maintain a specific temperature, uh, very precise temperature of the uh, sample. So, the subsurface modification occurs by adsorption followed by diffusion. This uh, ingress of nitrogen uh, from, this, from the atmosphere leads to formation of nitrides and causes increase in hardness and wear resistance. Uh, the nitrides increase also the fatigue strength and corrosion resistance. We have discussed at length in the previous uh, lectures. And the process is extremely environment friendly. Now, this is very important part as to why this will clarify as to why plasma nitriding is always given a choice favored over the other processes of liquid or gaseous nitriding. Because the temperature exposure is limited, time is smaller and uh, environment is plasma, the dimensional change that may happen is minimal in this case and there is no quenching, there is no drastic uh, 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 drop in temperature required. So, the dimensional change is minimal even if uh, it undergoes some amount of expansion due to exposure to 550 or so, uh, when we bring it to room temperature without any quenching, um, it does not really suffer any uh, dim major dimensional change. So, there is no question of any distortion or warping or cracking. So, we would like to now uh, compare the gas nitriding and plasma nitriding. These two are, let us say, these two are competing processes. So, process temperature wise about the same. In fact, it could be a little lower. Uh, process gas or the uh, precursor mixture is uh, ammonia and nitrogen in case of nitriding, uh, gas nitriding, and it is pure nitrogen and hydrogen in case of um, uh, plasma nitriding. So, this ammonia actually uh, is supposed to crack, may crack actually during the processing, but in this case we use two pure gases. So, we actually can maintain the very precise uh, ratio of these two gases. When we uh, compare this with nitrocarburizing, uh, which is a gas based process, um, wherein we actually have combination of both carbon and nitrogen introduced to the surface there is possibility of uh, uh, emission of carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide is one of the greenhouse gases. Now, instead of that, uh, uh, if we want in plasma uh, processing, if we want carbon to uh, actually be used, then we do not use uh, um, any of these um, uh, uh, CO2 or pure carbon, but we use hydrocarbon. And, uh, this is un, this is not a hydrocarbon gas. It is not a harmful gas. It does not affect the ozone layer. So, so even if we emit some of these gases, it is not going to affect. So, it is much uh, more environment friendly. Uh, the gas consumption, this is a very major advantage of plasma nitriding, is almost an order of magnitude lower because we are feeding uh, exactly the precise uh, ratio uh, of the gas composition that we need and uh, consumption or utilization is much high, better with a higher efficiency. So, the consumption is uh, almost an order of magnitude lower. Um, cleaning, prior cleaning to the treatment is very important because uh, in any of these high temperature processes 
of iron based components why only iron let's say titanium or um, chromium or all these uh, metals are very prone to formation of ferrothene oxide layer onto the surface in case of iron this is actually uh, a, a very major tendency so when these oxides form they act as barrier for any amount of ingress of uh, 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 gaseous atoms from the atmosphere so we don't want that uh, impediment so we want to clean and in case of uh, plasma nitriding this is much easier because we actually can reverse the polarity of the electrodes and then allow sputtering of uh, uh, ions or atoms from the surface and that's how we can clean a few atomic layers from the surface so there's no separate cleaning required it can be done in situ in the chamber itself um, so here we are using ammonia as a precursor and in plasma nitriding we are using only nitrogen as precursor so uh, there's no health hazard uh, involved at all so in general what, what one can say by comparison is that uh, plasma nitriding uh, a general gas nitriding produces a lot of um, uh, NOx gases uh, produces uh, greenhouse gases and also uh, gas consumption in general is higher so in comparison plasma nitriding is free from this emission of NOx or greenhouse gases and also consumes much lower amount of uh, gas mixture. So, uh, a more time wise and material wise, uh, more economical and more energy friendly. I already mentioned that distortion is minimum because uh, uh, there is no direct quenching, there is no drastic change in temperature, even temperature exposure is uh, lower. So, all these components, possible components like gears or um, uh, shafts or uh, cams or uh, let us say valve seats or uh, nuts and bolts and so on, whatever, whatever is plasma nitrided, they actually will um, are prone to less amount of distortion or warping. So, this is the typical um, uh, blue violet glow discharge which actually proves the presence, uh, the physical appearance proves the presence of nitrogen plasma. Uh, usually plasma nitriding is done on finished components, so like this, so there is no further machining required uh, generally and uh, because uh, there is no distortion, so the finished component can be just subjected to plasma nitriding as the final heat treatment, final treatment, uh, surface engineering treatment so that we actually create a few uh, tens of a micrometer maybe uh, close to a millimeter thick of uh, nitri nitrided layer. The cost is lower so the process is more economical and uh, also the time wise you require less time maybe 10, 15 percent less amount of time. So this is what we have already discussed that uh, the gas used is uh, uh, much lower about an order of magnitude lower. The carbon emission, the NOx emission, they are much lower in case of plasma. Also the um, carbon bearing gas uh, emitted from the chamber is much lower in case of plasma. So economical both time and uh, material wise, uh, more efficient, um, temperature lower, gas consumption lower and certainly um, more economic uh, environment friendly. So, the other processes I already mentioned about plasma nitriding is exactly the same as gas nitriding or even liquid nitriding. That means you create nitride layer onto the surface uh, and uh, like we discussed in the previous lecture at details, um, the first layer could be the, Z, uh, the uh, zeta nitride and then we can have um, uh, epsilon nitride or um, gamma prime nitride and so on. So, anything from Fe4n to Fe2n mixture of that graded from the surface to the core and that is the reason why we get all these high hardness, high wear resistance, even fatigue resistance, uh, corrosion resistance and so on and so forth. So, exactly the same. Now, even in plasma nitriding, now we are going to discuss a little variation and offshoot of uh, the normal plasma nitriding which actually can give us. Uh, 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 better functionality 
And this is uh, by either of the two approaches, one is called plasma based ion implantation. So essentially you create a plasma environment, you insert your specimen inside the chamber and then you actually apply negatively biased pulses. So when you apply negatively biased electrical pulses, you actually make the nitrogen ions, cations to move faster, accelerate them and move, make them move faster and get implanted with a certain velocity onto the surface of the specimen which is on the cathode. So, uh, so the positively charged ions are uh, accelerated towards a negative electrode and they get implanted and then uh, apart. So, earlier on all the processes of uh, nitriding discussed so far, we expect the nitrogen either atom or ion to come onto the surface, become uh, in the nascent state, they are supposed to get adsorbed and then they diffuse in. But here is a process where we actually implant the ions directly as a projectile onto the surface and they diffuse in. So, there is a, there's a uh, very uh, exciting possibilities of using such approaches for particularly for biomedical prosthesis, prosthetics like this femur joint or the knee joint or hip joints and so on. And uh, this is applicable not just to steel or uh, stainless steel, but to titanium and uh, several other uh, metals, even uh, non-metals when they are actually uh, coated with certain metals. So, a variant of that plasma based ion implantation, another variant of that is called plasma immersion ion implantation. And this is an approach, basically these two approaches came one from plasma based ion implantation came from uh, USA uh, patented technology and plasma immersion ion, ion implantation was patented in Australia from uh, another organization. So, this is the uh, uh, plasma environment that we create inside the chamber. Uh, incidentally, um, uh, I must mention here that this kind of uh, facility exists at IIT Kharagpur. This was a uh, special facility created through a special grant from the Department of Science and Technology and uh, we actually made uh, very substantial use of this. So, this is what I was trying to say that you create these uh, nitrogen ions, cations and when you apply uh, electric field, then the advantage here is that this whole chamber, this whole chamber is your anode and this sample, whatever is that shape, dimension or contour is your cathode. So, all these positive ions or cations, when you apply the uh, negatively biased uh, electric, uh, electric pulses, they all will get energized and accelerated to go and implant from all sides. So, if this is your specimen, it will have implantation from all sides. And normally, in a, in a gas nitriding or plasma nitriding, you actually do, a, do have the sample uh, exposed to the atmosphere and then um, a, a particular environment and the, the uh, atoms or the ions actually flow in and sit onto the surface. And here you actually are projecting them, propelling them onto the surface. So, the implantation is very uniform and it is that is why it is called a typical non-line, I think I better be writing here. Oh, so it is written here. It's, it's a non-line of sight process, which means in normal beamline implantation, if this is the beam, then you implant only here, not on the other side. But since you are implanting from all sides in PI cube, you actually can brand it as a non-line of sight process. So, all the normal incidents, you have both the effect of implantation and diffusion. In the process, you can create extended solid solubility, uh, defy the solubility limit. Uh, the all the products can actually be in the final shape, net shape. Uh, there is very close dimensional tolerance possible. You can create metastable microstructures and also can enhance the mechanical properties significantly. In fact, one very bright example I would like to show to you is that this is the kind of uh, ultra fine, this length scale is 100 nanometer. So, each of these nitride that you are seeing are implanted on and grown onto the surface would be about a tenth of that. So, typically we are talking about something like about 10 to 20 nanometer nitrides created 
on it, you can do it on steel, on titanium, on any other nitride forming substrates. In fact, this also gives you a very exciting possibility of having a pre-alloyed surfaces which contain certain silicides and in addition to silicides, you can also create nitrides through this plasma immersion ion implantation. All these results are published and uh, I am sure you can refer to the literature and see these for yourself. So, uh, we should now try and uh, re recapitulate the whole uh, exercise. Uh, we learned what is plasma, we uh, understood why is it called the fourth, state, fourth and the metastable state. We um, uh, understood what is plasma nitriding and how do the, does it differ from the so called gas or liquid nitriding. We uh, realized that the strengthening mechanism is identical that we have in case of other forms of nitriding. The main advantage is we had a very nice comparison with, between gas nitriding and plasma nitriding. And we also realized that uh, plasma based or immersion ion implantation offer us a long line of sight process of implantation and hence it, it actually uh, is a very huge, ex huge advantage. This is environment friendly plasma nitriding because of uh, the lack of emission of these kind of um, uh, NOx or uh, greenhouse gases. And uh, uh, what we also should appreciate is that nitriding as a whole is a process which is applicable not only to steel, but all other various other ferrous or non-ferrous uh, metals, whereas carburizing is primarily meant for steel. So, with this we come to the close of the uh, process description of carburizing and nitriding treatments. And uh, now what remains is to take a quick look at the overall uh, scope of heat treatment, why these are necessary after this kind of uh, either carburizing, primarily carburizing treatment and sometimes also nitriding treatments. So, thank you very much.